Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Applying Ethology webinars. I am Laura Whalen, a PhD student at the University of British Columbia in Canada. And I've been working with Christian Narong, Jen Yan Shao, and Rachel Park to organize these webinars. I want to remind you all to please turn off your camera and your microphone. Should you have questions for our speaker, please type them in the chat box and we will get to them at the end of the presentation. Today is my privilege to welcome Dr. Alu Asha Ayusari, who is a senior lecturer in the Department of Animal Physiology at the Federal University of Agriculture in Abiyokuta, Nigeria. She completed her PhD in Newcastle University in 2014 with a thesis project about the effect of stress on broiler chickens, performance, physiology, and welfare. She has a long-term interest in farm animal behavior and welfare, especially in chickens and goats. She is an, also an expert in Nigerian indigenous chickens, which is her topic for today's talk, Mothering in Nigerian Indigenous Hens. Aluisha, welcome. Thank you very much, Laura, for the good introduction. I want to say good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are across the world. I'm Oluwashom Iyasiri by name, a senior lecturer and researcher in the Department of Animal Physiology, Federal University of Agriculture, Abelkuta, Nigeria. I'm happy to present to you on this topic, modern in Nigerian indigenous hens and I hope you find it interesting. Nigerian indigenous chickens, they are estimated to be 140 million and they remain artificially unselected. However, they have undergone several years of natural selection associated with changes in the environmental condition. These birds exhibit their natural behavior especially the hens, which show egg laying, brooding of eggs, and post-hatch care for their chicks. Some of the characteristics of Nigerian indigenous chickens are, they are self-reliant, they are hardy, they, are readily, they readily adapt to adverse environmental condition, and they can survive on low, on little imputes by the farmers or the rearers. These birds come in different genotypes. Like we can see in the figure, we have the normal feather, the frizzle feather, and the naked neck genotype. According to a survey that was conducted in two states in Nigeria, Bayestal State and Nasarawa State, from the figure one, we'll see that the percentage of the normal feather Nigerian indigenous chicken are about 90% and above while the frizzle feather and the naked neck gene, uh, birds are 5% and below. This shows that the frizzle and the naked neck chicken seem to be endangered. Apart from having these three genotypes, we could also classify <coughs> the Nigerian indigenous chicken based on the ecotypes, which means the ecological zone in which they are found. We have two major ecological zones that have been reported. We have the forest and the savanna. And the breeds of chicken that are found in the forest are referred to as the Yoruba ecotype, while those in the savanna region are referred to as the Fulani ecotype. The Fulani ecotype, they are heavy breeds and they weigh about 0 0.9 to 2.5 kilogram at maturity. While the Yoruba ecotype are referred to as the light breeds and weigh between 0 0.68 to 1.5 kilogram at maturity. <coughs> Today's topic, however, is on modern in Nigerian indigenous chicken. And modern encompasses three major aspects, starting from the egg laying, which is the first phase, followed by the brooding of the eggs and then post hatch care of the chicks. These three groups enables the survival of the chicks. Hence, the mother hens constitute the main environment of their chicks. I'm going to present a case study of the egg laying behavior of two Nigerian indigenous hens. And we looked at the duration of egg laying in these beds. The definition of uh, the egg laying behavior is the interval between the time the bed entered into the next bust 
and coming out after laying an egg. This involves the period when the hen tries to prepare the nest. It lays the egg, which is the actual oviposition, and it also sits on the eggs after laying, then coming out of the next bus. We could see that for this hen number one, we were able to monitor this hen for six laying activities. That means six eggs, uh, 16 eggs laid by that particular hen. And we could see the variation in the duration of egg laying of this particular hen as the number of egg increases. The same thing was also seen in the second hen which we monitored. This hen laid nine eggs and we were able to monitor the duration of laying like I defined for the first, second, up to the ninth egg. But what interests me is that uh, towards the end of the egg laying process, we could see an increase in the duration spent by the hen to lay this egg. Though the reason is yet to be known, however, it seems that towards the end, when the birds is uh, uh, yet um, almost uh, accumulating a clutch of egg, which would move to the next stage of brooding, the duration of egg laying seem to be on the high side. On the average for the total number of eggs laid by each of the hen is shown in this figure too, and the average duration is about 20 minutes. And there was no significant difference between these two hens. So on the average, we could say that from the preparation to the laying and sit and coming out of the next bus, it could take the Nigerian indigenous hen about 20 minutes to do this process. This is just a case study. There are no reports yet that have looked at the duration of egg laying in this bit. After egg laying, after the hen have accumulated a clutch of egg, then there is an increase, sorry, increase <coughs> the change in the physiological system of the eggs uh, of the hen, which induces uh, brooding. And broodiness is when the hen sits on her egg to hatch them. The mother hen have, have a very important role to play at this particular point because she helps to regulate the temperature, the relative humidity, and she also helps in turning the eggs frequently. It has been reported that the relative humidity during incubation should be around 60 to 80%. And this is achieved by the, by the mother hen because at times she could take some water and splash on the egg, depending on the relative humidity of the environment. Studies on broodiness are few because these traits have been selected against in most commercial stocks. However, the Nigerian indigenous chicken still exhibit a lot of broodiness. And <clears throat> we have a study which we conducted to look at how uh, the, the changes in the physiology and behavior of these hens uh, uh, change as the brooding period um, progresses. It has also been reported that the turning of the egg is very important because it enables the embryo to develop properly so that it wouldn't stick to the shell. And uh, it has been shown that the mother hen would try to turn the egg about 96 times in 24 hour period. So what are the changes associated with broodiness? We have behavioral changes. We also have physiological changes. Some of the behavioral changes are reduction in the feed and water intake. There is frequent occupancy of the nest and she turns and retrieves the eggs. She becomes aggressive and defensive of the eggs and she, uh, the, the, there's a characteristic clocking vocalization. In terms of the physiological changes, there's a cessation of egg production, development of brood patches, and the prolactin hormone initiates the brooding behavior of the birds. More so, heat transferred from the broody hen through the brood patch, which, is, which occurs around the breast region of the hen, helps in the development of the embryo. Now, what do we know about brood patch in Nigeria indigenous chicken? Is it all the hens that develop brood patch or do they show this brood patch uh, degree at different levels? We were able to <coughs> get uh, 22 uh, Nigeria indigenous chickens that were broody within a period of one week. And we looked at the different degree of brood patches and we're able to score from a score zero which is no brood patch at all to a score five, which is 
almost, you know, the, the breast region, everything, the feathers have been removed. And from these 22 beds, we observed that from this figure, that um, most of the bed had a score of three. Most of the Nigerian indigenous chicken that we assessed had a score of three. And we'll see that score of four and five, one and two are also common, which shows that most indigenous, uh, Nigerian indigenous hen show brood patch, uh, develop brood patch during the brooding process, which is very good because it enables them to transfer the heat required for the development of the embryo. So the question we now asked ourselves was that, what physiological changes occur as brooding progresses? And does the behavior of the hen differ as brooding progresses? Because it is known that there are different developmental stages of the embryo at these different stages from the first day to the last day of incubation. However, it is unknown whether this behavior, probably the sitting, the percentage of time that the hen sits on the egg, does it differ at the early or mid stage of brooding compared to the late stage of brooding? And what physiological changes differ? That is the, uh, the question we were able to answer in our study one. For this study, um, birds were selected from an established flo flock of Nigerian indigenous hens at the research uh, station at FUNA, Federal University of Agriculture, Alberta. We're able to get 12 broody hen and they had 10 eggs to brood on. This broody hen were separated into a broody pen with at this dimension. And we observed the behavior of the broody hen between the period of two and six, 2 p.m. and 6 p.m twice a week to represent each week of the brooding phase. We also looked at the behavior or the time spent sitting especially and on ingestive behavior. Ingestive behavior here is the, is the, is the sum of the time spent feeding and drinking by the hens. We also looked at some physiological data such as the blood glucose, the rectal and the breast temperature. How these physiological measurements were taken two hours before the behavioral observation so that there won't be any, any effect on the behavior that we are reporting. So our tab this table one shows that there was no significant effect on the percentage of time sitting. It did not differ from week one to week three of the brooding process, which shows that irrespective of the stage of the embryo, embryo, uh, embryo development, the time spent by the broody hen was similar at week one, week two, and towards the end of brooding. The same thing was observed. The same thing was ob observed in the time spent feeding. So, and this result showed that once brooding is initiated in the Nigerian indigenous hen, they, 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 they are consistent in the pattern of sitting and also ingestion. They, it's not that it changes with the early developmental stage compared to the late developmental stage. Result from the physiological and body mass changes of the Nigeria indigenous hen is presented in table two. We could see that the blood glucose level of these birds at the first week and the second week were lower compared to the third week. And this implies uh, the need for an increase in body, met body metabolism towards the end of the brooding process. It's for the breast temperature, we observed that the breast temperature was higher at the first and second week, which represents the early and the mid phase of the brooding process compared to the third week. And which means that towards the end of brooding, the chicks are able to generate some heat and there is the need for a reduction in the amount of heat transferred by the mother hen to the eggs through the breast. A table three shows the person correlation on the behavior, some of the, the selected physiological indicators and the body mass of the broiler hens. We had a significantly and positive, positively high 
correlation between the breast temperature and the blood glucose level. The breast temperature helps in the trial. It is th through this that heat is being transferred by conduction from the blood patch to the embryo. And it has a positive relationship with the body metabolism, the blood glucose level. There are several case studies have been reported on brooding in Nigerian indigenous chicken. Biobaku and Adeleye 2010 reported the case of two hens, mutually broody hens. He reported it as a rare case where these two, the two hens <coughs> showed clinical signs of anorexia, weight loss, wasting of the pectoralis muscle, and loss of feather. However, in our research site, we found an interesting, um, an interesting thing that happened, which I termed as mixed brooding, because it occurred between three brooding hens. From the home pen observation, the beds were housed one cock and six hens, but we observed that two hens were actually trying to drag the egg towards themselves to sit upon it. The video is, uh, you can get the video of that through this link. So we, we separated the three hens which were broody in this, they were from the same pen, so we separated them into a broody pen. And we observed these hens from day seven to day 20. And the observation was, if we had three cells, this is uh, an example of what the nest box looked like. It had three cells, cell one, cell two, and cell three. So we observed that on different observation days, the, 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 the hands actually changed position in the, in the eggs that they were sitting on. For instance, the first picture up here, we have the white hen in the first cell, the bad hen in the second cell, and the white and black, that's the way we tag it, in the third cell. On another observation time, we discovered a change. We have the bad in the first cell, the white and black in the second cell, and the white hen in the third cell. Another change that we observed, so we noticed that <clears throat> between the day seven and the day 20 of the brooding process, these hens were actually changing position. The reason for this probably could be that because they were um, from the same home pain where we selected them and maybe they are used to themselves. So when we try to look at the percentage of time spent in each um, nest box cell, we observed that <clears throat> for the first nest box cell, the white hen spent most of her time brooding the eggs in the, in the cell one while the black and white spent a higher portion of her time in cell two and the bad hen in cell three. What was interesting from this case study was that at the day 20 when uh, chicks, uh, some chicks hatched, we discovered that all the, the three hens actually left, they actually left their, the, the eggs they were brooding and they went and were trying to, 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 to attract or get used to the chicks that have been hatched. So the question now is who is the real mother? Because the three of them actually sat at different times on these eggs. So, but based on our uh, observation on, from this figure four, the chicks which hatch, when we looked at the broken shells, we noticed that it was from cell one. So we, we, we decided that just to settle the, the, what they were doing, trying to, the three of them were trying to get the chicks to themselves. We removed the chicks from this uh, pen and uh, the white hen, we took, which we observed spent a longer time um, sitting in that cell. After, we, after doing this, the two hens that were left went back to their eggs and the, 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 the rotation kept on until the two of them hatched their eggs. Actually, this is a case study that is quite interesting, and we don't really know why. Probably because the hens were from the same cell, and they, you know, hens have this um, good cognitive ability; they can uh, identify those that are within their environment better. We don't know actually if we had if we have separated uh, chicks from uh, hens from different uh, pens, if this same trend would be observed. 
So we'll now go to the maternal care. After the brooding, there's the hatching of the eggs. However, prior to, to hatching, few days to hatching, the mother hen communicates through vocalization. The mother hen and the developing embryo communicates through pre-hatching vocalization. And after hatching, the mother hen communicates with her chick through the roosting, the maternal clock, the alarm, and the feed call. <coughs> For artificially reared chicks, there are some welfare issues that have been reported, several of them in uh, laying beds, in quills. They, it has been reported that chicks that are not reared by, their mod by mothers, whether the real mother hen or a foster hen, show increased level of fear. They lack anti-predatory behavior. They show increased aggression. They show increased feather pecking increased flight responses, and impaired spatial skills. Other studies have also tried to use different types of maternal cues uh, from the mother hen uropigial secret secretion analog, the use of the maternal clock and the food call playback, and also the use of dark brooders to simulate different characteristics of the mo mother hen. And these have actually shown to be to give a positive influence on the cheeks, on the cheeks. So our study two was actually to look at the physiological responses of indigenous mother hens to a short-term separation from her cheeks. If she is separated from her cheeks, how does she respond? Does it actually induce any physiological changes? So birds. Broody hens were, were, were selected and we maintained them through the process of brooding and we specifically after, after hatching, we made sure that the, the, the remnants of the shells were removed and uh, any egg that wasn't hatched was removed and the egg, the hen and her chicks were left undisturbed for seven days. We subjected each hen to two types of separation tests. The first one was the physical separation, which was done on the eight and the 16 post hatch, while the visual separation test was done on the 12th and the 28th day post hatch. This uh, figure shows what the physical separation looks like. We have the mother hen and her cheeks separated by a wire mesh, which means the hen could see her cheeks. However, she couldn't be, she, 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 there is no access to the chicks. But for the visual separation, there is a wooden platform that separates the mother hen from her chicks. She could hear the vocalization, they could communicate through vocalization, but visually <clears throat> they are not in contact. And in this study, we, we took some parameters, the blood glucose, we checked the eye temperature and also the change in the heart rate of the, of the hen in particular. And our results showed that the response of the mother hen, this is uh, when visually separated from her cheeks at the first time was uh, the, the change in the heart rate was higher compared to, to the second time when she, when she was visually separated from them, which uh, explains the fact that the mother hen felt this, uh, this separation, uh, it had this, a higher response to the separation at the first time when she was visually separated from her cheeks than the second time. However, for the physical separation, there was no significant difference, probably because she could see her cheeks and she knows that everything was fine. For the eye blood glucose level and for the eye temperature, there was no significant effect based on, on the, uh, the separation time, whether the first or the second, and also the type of separation. So uh, table four shows the on average for the uh, first and second physical separation and for the first and second visual separation, there was only a decline in the blood glucose level of the mother hen. And this could be explained by uh, adrenal hypertrophy, which is an indicator of stress in chickens. So in conclusion <coughs> for the study one, the breast temperature of the broody hen was higher at the first and second week compared to the third week of uh, the brooding process. The blood glucose concentration 
was lower at the first and second week compared to the third week of the brooding process. While the time spent sitting and on ingesting, ingestion didn't change as the brooding progressed from the first to the third week of brooding. However, the rectal temperature was maintained throughout the, the, the brooding process. For the second study, we observed that visual separation was more stressful to the mother hen than the physical separation, and the change in the heart rate of the mother hen was greater at the first than the second visual separation. There are further studies that we'll need to conduct on uh, the mother hen is to compare the behavior and welfare of broiler chicks fostered by Nigerian indigenous chicken hens and those that are reared artificially. We intend to, to provide uh, uh, broiler eggs to uh, the broody Nigerian indigenous chicken that become broody and see how they would uh, train or how they would uh, keep these chicks after hatching. And the second uh, research uh, that we are interested in is to know if mutual stroke or mixed breeding, brooding caused by, is, is it caused by the close relationship between the broody hens? Will we experience this same trend if we have hens that were removed from different pens? And also, based on the three genotypes that are reported and the, and the two ecotypes that I reported in the introduction, we don't know if the genotype, the, the different genotypes and the ecotype have different modern abilities. And uh, I would like to acknowledge uh, the efforts of uh, my project students Alade, Alajumake, Ajay, I think that the Oyonero, Oyekunle. I said thank you. These are some of my references and thank you for listening. I hope I, um, I worked with time really. <laughs> I don't know, Aluva Shah, thank you so much for your presentation. And thank you. If you want to um, stop sharing, then we can see your face full screen. That would be great. Uh, for those attending, if you would be so kind as to type in some questions in the chat box to get us started, that would be great. Um, but I do have a few. And the first one, I know you aren't studying this, but just out of curiosity, you talked about the normal feathers, the frizzle feathers, and the naked neck chickens, like the, yeah. the different genotypes. So what are the some of the evolutionary differences for why, like why would you, what would be the benefit of having a frizzled feather or a naked neck? Yeah, uh, from uh, the thermoregulatory aspect, the naked neck and the frizzle feather are better able to adapt to a hot environmental condition. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, going to your, I think it was your, your case study, I know you said you weren't sure why you saw the results in your case study with the hens, the three hens and the three different boxes. Um, but would you see these chickens in the wild set on nests that weren't their own? Or do you think the boxes were too close? Or do, you, or do hens in the wild actually, they do sit on other chickens' nests? Uh, the reason actually I can't see. Uh, the next buses may be close, but uh, uh, I'm not really sure but I think because when we observe the birds from the pen, even right from their home pen, before we separated them into this broody pen where they were provided, they were actually trying to drag the eggs between themselves. Hmm. Yes. So it was observed right from the home pen before we separated them. And they still continued, you know, switching uh, cells. Huh. So kind of like communal egg care. Yes. Very interesting. So Sarah asks, well, first she starts by saying, thank you very much for the very interesting talk. How did you measure the heart rate in the chickens? And can you say something about the biological relevance of the physical and physical plus visual separation? Is that something that would happen to the chicks and hen in nature or just in keeping them? 
Uh, actually, we use a stethoscope in measuring the heart rate because we don't have an automated device to do that. And it would have been better if we could have done that and would actually check the heart rate variability. But we, we, we have not been able to do that. So we, we made use of what is available to us, which is the use of the stethoscope. So can you say something at the biological relevance? Yes. Um, Based on my personal observation, um, and what because most of these Nigerian indigenous chicken, they are read, you know, extensively. They scavenge around uh, looking for food, and there are times when after hatching and the mother hen takes the chicks out, you see, uh, like a hawk or predator, try to take, you know, the chick from her, and you see this aggressive response that she shows. You know, at times making the alarm call, and she tries to attack at times. So. Um, I just developed interest in that and, and uh, decided to see if we separate if we use different type of separation and see which one is more stressful to the mother hen. Great, thank you for that. Uh, Sharon says, thank you for your interesting presentation. I was wondering what sort of changes the hen underwent because of natural selection, and could those changes have caused them to show these brooding behaviors? Sorry, I didn't get that question. So uh, these hens have been relatively untouched, like we have there we haven't been breeding for them and so they've had some natural selection for yes. how the breed has evolved and so yes. do you think because of that natural selection that that could cause some of the brooding hate behaviors you talked about in the first study or do you or do you think that brooding behaviors are specific to this breed like like where have the brooding behaviors come from mm. I'm not sure if it's actually caused by natural selection. And um, I know of other studies, uh, especially in Bangladesh, they, they publish a lot about uh, broody hens. And, uh, but uh, few studies have actually looked at uh, maybe mutual or mixed breeding, brooding uh, scenario or reported anything related to, to that. Uh, it's it's quite difficult to explain because these are, these are just uh, things that uh, I observed uh, in the research site. Yeah. Uh, but um, naturally, I don't know if it actually happened because most of the uh, mother hen or the hens that are scavenged around, they look for the appropriate place to, to build their nest and to lay their eggs, so which we may not know whether any other hen is going there to, you know, to, 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 to do the same thing. But I can't really say about what happens naturally for these birds. That's all right, thank you. Birta says, fascinating breed. Do you think the difference in time spent laying eggs in the case study you presented first was related to the laying frequency? So how many times they laid an egg? Sometimes hens skip a day and the first hen may have been reset in her timing schedule due to having skipped the previous day? Yes, we didn't take note of that, but I understand. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Macy asks, really great talk, thank you. Many people here in the UK try to break broodiness and some breeds of chickens, which commonly show more broody traits like silkies, peckins, etc. Do you have any thoughts on whether the various interventions people do could cause changes in hormones and stress levels? Yeah, that's a nice uh, question. Um, but uh, broodiness, like I said, is triggered by an increase in the level of uh, prolactin. Uh, uh, I know of, uh, I've read about different methods by which uh, uh, people try to break broodiness, like placing them in water and uh, maybe removing the eggs or placing them in uh, in a wired cage. Where they, but uh, um, uh, personally, uh, I believe that uh, a broody hen should be uh, allowed to express her natural behavior. Personally, <laughs> yeah, great. Beer to ask: Are any of the white feathered? hens frizzled or naked neck 
or is this the only related to the color phenotypes? Uh, in terms of uh, the genotype, uh, it does not have anything to do with the plumage color. Okay. Uh, Olu, uh, Washin. I'm sorry if I've mispronounced your name. I want to congratulate to the presenter for the beautiful presentation. However, is there any observed relationship between the temperature of the breast of the chicken and the number of eggs that will be laid? Um, if I understand that question properly, um, maybe the, 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 she wants to ask, if there is a relationship between the breast temperature and the number of eggs that the hen is brooding. Um, um, yeah. Yeah, I think that's what she wants to ask. It's a question we can look into, but there's the possibility. There's the possibility because if the hen have a, a large you know, clutch of egg to sit on, and she needs to uh, roll and turn around and do this, she might, there's the possibility for the breast temperature to be higher, so to cover all the eggs compared to uh, a hen that is incubating or brooding few number of eggs. That's the possibility, but I can really say. Oh, interesting. Thanks for that. Another question. Thank you for your presentation, and I congratulate you for the results that you got. Um, I would love to know if measure if you measured any other stress indicators uh, beyond the data you presented today? If yes, can you give an idea of what other stress indicators you measured? No, I didn't. No? I didn't, uh, though it would have been good to take uh, like the corticosterone level, but uh, it has also been reported that cort uh, corticosterone is not the best and you need to take it within a few minutes of handling the beds for you to get the real picture and the real uh, stress level experienced by the hand. So, and also there's this diurnal changes in the level of corticosteroids. So it might not give us a real picture of what is actually happening. So. Do you think there would have been any other, like could you have looked at behaviors or do you think that it's just hormones that really tell us about stress? Yeah, we recorded the behavior of uh, the hints that uh, I was not able to, you know, include it in this presentation. Yeah, that's okay. But what were some of the behaviors that you might have looked at that might have shown stress? Yes, okay, I should mention some of them. Yeah. Uh, uh, some of the hints, when they were um, subjected to the visual separation, that is when they had the, the wooden partition, where the hen and the chicks uh, were not able to see themselves. Uh, a particular hen, which I actually got interested in, was trying to jump out of the test uh, arena. You know, she became restless. She couldn't. She was just pacing around throughout the ten minutes period. Well, another hen, when subjected to the physical separation, uh, after some time of trying to 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 get in touch with the chicks, but because she could see them with the wire mesh separation, she just sat down in the test arena. So that this. Um, activity level would also be part of uh, the changes that we saw in, yeah. the, in the heart rate of the hen. Yeah, so there seem to have been individual differences too, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this seems to be more of a comment. Natural selection deals with fitness. Fitness deals with survival and reproduction. The hens need broodiness to reproduce naturally. A very good presentation. Thank you. Interesting work. Thanks. Was there any difference in hatchability in relation to the brooding behavior? Uh, the brooding behavior I reported in the first study was to look at um, the time spent sitting on the egg from the first to the third week. Um, we didn't check the hatchability of the eggs. However, you know, hatchability uh, is uh, caused by several factors apart from uh, brooding. It could be due to a lot of things, um, but we didn't check the hatchability. 
If you could do it again, what might you check? If we rep uh, repeat this um, study, would uh, be interested in looking at uh, uh, maybe the, how she turns the egg, mm -hmm. if we are able to capture that, how she turns the egg, and uh, also um, taking the but a uh, breast temperature relative to the number of eggs that you know forms the clutch based on clutch size, or we could vary the number of eggs given to the broody hens and see if they will actually do the same thing. Uh, just to know if uh, the clutch size has something or to or can change the brooding behavior of the hens. Yeah, very interesting. Can you imagine that a commercial laying hen might become broody if she is kept in a more natural environment? <clears throat> I'm not sure a commercial laying hen can become broody because they've actually been selected against the broodiness that treat. Yeah. Uh, however, uh, the dual purpose might, might, uh, might become broody because uh, there's a personal, uh, observation with uh, a colleague who bought uh, uh, the FUNAB Alpha uh, laying hen, which is quite a, a dual purpose. And <clears throat> he kept that dual purpose hen with the Nigerian indigenous. He housed them together. Though it was an extensive system, they could go out, but they, they, they sleep in the same thing. But what he told me happened was that after some time, this dual purpose hen actually learned to sit on her egg and she became broody and was able to hatch, you know, the chicks. However, the difference he observed was that in terms of this modern ability, it was less expressed in the dual purpose hen compared to the, to the indigenous hen. That's what he told me about his experience. So then in that experience, it seems like there was a little bit of social learning going on. Yes. I have seen several of that. Huh, very interesting. Yes. Could the different level of activities between mother hens when separated be due to individual differences? Yes, there is a possibility of uh, uh, individual differences based on the personality of the animal. There are some that are actually aggressive, but some are, you know, they are, they are a bit okay, so you can still approach them without them attacking you. So there is the role of personality in this as well. Very cool. What do you imagine now that you have really started to work on this brooding behavior of these Nigerian hens, how do you imagine is the best way to take care of these hens? Do you think they, it should be a hands-off approach? Do you have some ideas of how to make housing better for them? Like what's your vision? At the moment, I have about um, uh, close to 200 of them, uh, which I have kept intensively in my research station. And uh, I provide them with some environmental enrichment, at least to make them make it look natural. Yeah. And they, <laughs> they enjoy themselves. And uh, I provide them with next boxes. And at times, uh, a particular study which we did, we used the, we included a sand bath so that they could have this natural feeling. So it's quite good working with them and you, know, you seem to learn a lot from them. <laughs> yeah, the, especially after you noticed that they were seeming to like share clutches, do you notice that there's certain groups of hens that uh, spend a lot of time together or are they all pretty much their own yeah. own hen? I've not noticed that. No, okay. Um, have you in any of your research looked at any of the effects on the chicks? Because most of this seems to be the physiology of the hen and, and her brooding, but have you, for example, looked or indigenous hens that are really protective of their chicks and have a strong, uh, strong brooding behaviors, is there any sort of, do you, do you imagine that there might be effects on the chick as well? 
We haven't done anything on that, uh, but it's quite interesting. And uh, there is the possibility that uh, the chicks would definitely learn from the the the, the mothers, and uh, based on you know previous reports that have compared uh, broody and non-broody chicks, and have reported several uh, positive things. On, so I believe we are likely to see the same result. Very cool. Well, I don't see any more questions in the chat box, but Aluishan, uh, very well done presentation. And thank you so much for taking time to share with us all. Um, so a round of applause to you and many thanks. Thank you so much.